Christian Gray here. So I have a special presentation to you. So when I was writing my book, Who the Fuck Am I? I actually met Zandra V. Zandra V is a Texas art teacher now, finally. Uh, how long have you been teaching, Zandra? I've been teaching for 22 years. And what have you taught for 22 years? I taught at the same school in the same school district, sixth grade, fourth grade, third grade, and second grade. And what subject were you teaching? I was teaching everything. I focused on language arts, I was self-contained and taught science, social studies. I taught it all. So, self-contained, same school district, 20 years, so that's literally like a fourth of your lifespan if you're supposed to die when you're 80 or 100. And that's what she did. But when you think about it, that's when I was writing my book, we actually had a two-hour talk about overall life, just personal growth, not even professional development. And an opportunity presented itself where I am really good at writing resumes and she, what, did, what was it that you were looking for? I knew that I was in a place where I needed to make a change but I didn't necessarily know how to make that happen because being at the same school and the same profession for so long, I felt like there weren't a lot of other options. And for years, new principals, new administrators had come in and, and told me what the change was going to be. And I finally decided that, you know what, I need to take back my power and make the change that I want for yeah. myself. And so you helped me learn what I needed to know in order to step outside the box that I had been in to pursue what I really wanted to go after. And here I am, three months later, signed my contract yesterday. And what was it that you really desired? I really wanted to step outside of the academic side of education and pursue the creative side of education and, and, and pursue my passion of, of art and, and creative expression and allowing children to be more like themselves as opposed to meeting the standard of, of testing and the rigorous instruction. I wanted them to be able to explore their personal that is so awesome so everybody says you're you're supposed to find your passion and could you say that your passion was you knew you wanted to teach yes but just because you know what to teach means that you know what subject to teach and you know we can both say fairly that it's supposed to be oh I'm supposed to find what I'm supposed to teach no you're supposed to create it along the way but as you just stated, when you have your power taken away from you with curriculum instruction, grades that need to be met, uh, students that not, need to have certain grades, and all these other politics inside, it really loses sight of what that passion is. Could you say that? Absolutely. So, what was the epiphany once I created your resume? Because we had an hour and a half discussion of everything that she needed to know in terms of not only resume, but the business side of what the employer's looking for. And when I wrote your resume, you failed. How did you feel failing even though I gave you the tools to succeed? It was, it didn't feel so much like a failure. I chose to look at it as a learning opportunity. And with every conversation we had, I, I left the interviews asking myself, you know, what questions did I feel Good about and what questions did I feel not so good about and then I thought of how I could reframe my answer in a way that would show that employer that potential employer that yes it may be the first time I'm, I'm stepping outside of the box that I've been in for so long um, but reframing that thought to present it in a different way mm -hmm. so instead of seeing it as a failure seeing it as an opportunity to rethink. And at the end of the day, it's all about your perspective. If Do you consider an expense or an investment? Do you consider a loss or a gain? And one of the things as I was teaching her, just coaching her through is she, 22 years, same thing, you're gonna lose, like you use it or lose it, it's gonna happen, e even to me and myself, if you don't practice it, you don't know what it's like to start job hunting after 22 years. So as I tell people, even seasoned professionals who are very well endowed in their skill set doesn't mean they know the, the principles and fundamentals in terms of job seeking, a career opportunity, something that you're going to do for your passion. And so she had opportunities. And how many interviews did you have after the resume, after that one 
bad experience, how did you get better over time? And that you, even though you were gonna settle, because there was that point where you were gonna settle, staying where she was at, which was what she didn't wanna do, and I didn't want her to do, what kept driving you to keep applying, to keep doing it? How many did you do, and what kept driving you after each failure? It took six interviews. Okay. On the sixth interview, I, I, I received the job offer. Um, what, what continued to drive me um, was just being determined to, to reach my goal and, and realizing that my expectation was that it, I needed it and I felt like I wanted it so badly to happen right now, but, but appreciating and understanding that it's a process and that with time comes growth and that if it didn't happen this year, it didn't mean that um, all hope was lost. It meant that I had more time to continue to grow my skill set, to to really investigate. You know, what was it that I needed in order to to secure that job offer if it didn't happen now, so that I could continue to work towards that goal in the future. And that's one of the things is that everybody's going to need a coach somewhere along their life. You don't know everything, and it will take too much time for you to know everything. You can't just read an article and think that oh I know everything no because things change things evolve but if you understand the process or know somebody who understands the process it becomes much easier and so it took you six tries some people takes a hundred it took me 200 job applications to get my recruiting job that's allowed me to be able to do things like this for Zandra and in the case what was that driving force that acronym that she actually taught me and I want you guys to live in she taught me something that I've never taught, and I'm her coach to get her that career opportunity that she wanted. What was that acronym, that driving force? Well, after each interview, my, my takeaway was that people were hesitant to give me the opportunity to step outside the box because they saw me as someone who didn't have the right kind of experience. So I really started to process and, and think about, um, you know, like, like you coached me, why am I the exception and not the rule? Mm -hmm. So I, I really focused in on what my experience taught me and I, I got to the core of what good instruction is. That um, you know when, when kids are having a hard time, um, they're not giving me a hard time, they're having, me, they're, they're having a hard time. So what can I do as their teacher to facilitate, facilitate their learning? And, and all good teachers know that what you need are, are four things. If somebody's struggling, you throw them a rope. That you, you implement routine, organization, procedure, and engagement. And if those four things are in place, if you throw your students that rope that they need to be successful, it doesn't matter what you're trying to teach them. If you have that, that core as the heart of your instruction and the heart of your classroom environment, whatever you're trying to teach them will come after. And so that's what I really focused in on and that's what made the difference in my final interview is that somebody heard my passion for teaching is, is what really mattered. And so they were willing to give me the opportunity to, to spread my wings in an art class. And that is an awesome thing to hear is this acronym ROPE. And I love acronyms. And it just comes to show you is, you know, with humility, there comes learning. And with learning, there comes growth. You can't have one. They're, they're sisters. They're not twins. One's going to be bigger than the other at times. The other one's going to be bigger at times. Um, but at the end of the day, it just really boils down to your determination. And I will tell you this, Sandra, I do appreciate you not giving up. Because I know there were times that she got very discouraged. And discouraged, it's going to happen. It happens to me all the time. But at the end of the day, when you realize that it boils down to, do I really or do I not want it? Which is my desire in life. What do you really desire? Then pretty much nothing's impossible. You just got to keep going. Um, and with each failed attempt is another fucking opportunity of growth. I call that AFOG. That's my acronym. Yes. yes. So, Zandra, again, it was a pleasure. I thank you very much for sticking with me, I and I you. wish you the best for this year. Thank you. You're welcome. Take care, guys.